they said it wasn't humanly possible. But now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo. The 1980s saw the meteoric rise of the handheld console. In 1989, Nintendo breathed new life into portable gaming, following up their ageing Game & Watch range with the iconic Nintendo Game Boy. The success of the Game Boy is of course unparalleled, selling around 118 million units during its long lifespan, in which it went through a number of revisions. Many try to rival the Game Boy's success, and the following years saw the likes of Sega, NEC, Watara and Bandai, to name a few, throwing their hats into the ring to get a piece of the action. However, a few years before the Game Boy exploded onto the scene, in 1986, a little-known company called Epix developed a handheld console that they dubbed the Handy Game. Unfortunately for Epix, they ran into financial difficulties and the whole shebang was eventually bought by Atari, who, as luck would have it, were looking to break into the handheld scene themselves after initially dominating the home console market. Atari redesigned it and renamed it the Lynx, making it the de facto second handheld Atari system and eventually put it out in 1989 as a direct competitor to the Nintendo Game Boy. Atari had hoped at the time that the Lynx, with its technical superiority, would stand out above the monochrome Game Boy and become the next must-have handheld gaming console. To be honest, the Lynx was technically superior to the Game Boy and seemed to have just about everything going for it. A backlit colour display, impressive 16-bit graphics capable of multi-directional scrolling and sprite scaling, and even multiplayer connectivity for up to 8 players by way of the Comlink system. It also had one very unique feature that no other system had at the time, an ambidextrous layout. By way of a button combination, the screen could be flipped 180 degrees to allow a left-handed player to swap the positions of the D-pad and the action buttons. The first fully accessible console, perhaps? Unfortunately, all that extra power and performance came with a number of penalties. Firstly, it took six AA batteries and drained them in just a few short hours of play. Secondly, it retailed at rather a high price point above the cheaper Game Boy, putting off many potential buyers. And finally, it was large and bulky and kind of ungainly, and it reduced its portability massively. It could be said that it wasn't at all pocket friendly, in either sense of the expression. After an initially successful start, the Atari Lynx eventually failed to beat the more cost-effective and portable Nintendo Game Boy and fizzled out after a few short years. Not even a more ergonomically friendly and cheaper Mark II model could save it from failure. Before Atari finally up stumps on the Lynx in 1995, it had sold an estimated 1 to 3 million units and left behind a library of 73 games released during its lifespan, with a further 3 developed and released by Telegames after the console was discontinued. Although it didn't have quite as formidable a game library as the Nintendo Game Boy or the Sega Game Gear had, it still enjoyed a number of ports of well-loved Atari arcade games as well as a fairly good roster of original titles. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you the five games that I think really rose to the top of the pile. In the making of this video, I found a renewed love for the Atari Lynx and discovered that I really was impressed by rather more than just five games. So this list has been tough for me to whittle down. As ever, this is my personal opinion, and your mileage might vary, and I'm sure you're dying to get into the comments later on to remind me what I may have missed. So let's begin! Five of the best Atari Lynx. Take to the skies of World War I and go head to head against the Germans in this rather excellent flight simulator come shoot up. This one really demonstrates the Lynx's graphical capabilities. Ignore the shonkily drawn airplane sprites and instead marvel at the impressive sprite scaling and the speed and the polygon rendered landscape. As well as looking pretty darn good, it plays pretty darn good too. The aircraft handling is never too unruly as to be completely out of your control. Initially, you'll start flying wildly, but once you become accustomed to the physics of the plane, you'll be flying like a pro in no time. A very neat touch is the ability to look around in all directions in order to get a bead on your quarry so you can fill him with lead and send him crashing down to the ground. The game is extremely customisable, giving you the option to set damage and collisions off, choose unlimited ammo, as well as the choice of a selection of scenarios to play out. If you're lucky enough to have a friend who has an Atari Lynx, then you can also enjoy some multiplayer action courtesy of the Comlynx cable.
Yeah, no console would be complete without the obligatory Tetris-alike puzzle, and the Lynx is no exception. This is a port of Atari's arcade title and translates pretty well to the small screen. The aim is to clear the blocks as they fall into the well by completing a layer at a time. Rotate the blocks through all directions and drop them into place. It's easy to grasp and of course difficult to master. Again it comes with a wide range of gameplay options to increase or decrease the challenge. In the more difficult settings the blocks can change in shape dramatically making the task of tessellating them rather more brain bending than a run of the mill Tetris. I enjoy this one because it's visually impressive and an honest to goodness puzzle. It has a certain degree of customizability, if that's even a word, to change the size of the grid and the shapes of the blocks, to tailor your experience to suit you. A bit of a complaint, in order to rotate the blocks you need to press the A and B button simultaneously. If you don't get that button combo dead right, you'll accidentally drop the block instead. Never mind, a small complaint in what is otherwise overall a very enjoyable game. Straight out of the arcades comes this tale of a man turned ape on a gruelling quest to rescue his girlfriend from the clutches of an evil wizard. Yeah, don't think too much about the plot, okay? You're a monkey man and you kill your foes with spitballs, alright? What more could you want? One of Atari's own better known coin-op titles, this is predictably faithfully ported onto the handheld and it's really pretty good. The action is in no way diminished by the move to the small screen and it's really very close indeed to the original. And that includes the difficulty unfortunately. If the Atari Lynx games were guilty of anything it was that they were often pretty difficult and Toki is no exception. One hit and you're dead here. But it's not unplayable. You can progress well enough through the game once you remember enemy attack patterns for instance and you do get an adequate amount of continues to keep trying. It's fun, it's humorous and it's colourful and it's challenging. I particularly like the music which is quirky, never really gets all that irritating. The levels are gorgeously detailed and run the gamut from platforming to underwater levels. If you enjoyed the arcade version and you haven't yet played this, go ahead and give it a try. Lemmings, let's go! But who doesn't love lemmings? These persistently suicidal little critters have seen ports to just about every computer and console since they first tumbled onto the scene in what, 1991? And so here they are on the links. And it's a lovely conversion. Just about everything is present and correct. The level design, the atmosphere, the, the look and feel, it's all pretty much spot on. The music is, well, it, it's well imitated but not great. But to me the definitive soundtrack is the Amiga version anyway. The gameplay isn't hampered by the shrink down to the small screen and you don't see as much of the level on the screen at a time as in the bigger screen counterparts but the scrolling is good enough for you to be able to keep an eye on both ends of the map without losing track of business. Some levels do seem incorrectly scaled though making the lemmings look rather too large for the terrain but the upshot of this is that they traverse it a bit more easily so there's no real penalty to your gameplay there anyway. Selecting skills for your lemmings brings up a full screen menu and during this the action is paused which takes some of the pressure off for you in tight spots. Overall it comes across as a much more relaxed experience while still retaining the qualities that made Lemming so endearing in the first place. As handheld conversions go, it's pretty good and in my opinion, better than the Game Boy version. Boy I really do enjoy this game. Again, it's a port from the arcade really rather a well done one. The name of the game is to complete successful runs of increasingly more challenging and dangerous tracks, picking up items, shooting obstacles etc as you go. You have a limited time to complete each run and it's game over if you're too slow. In the arcades, Stun Runner was a very impressive game visually, so to see it here on the links is, is already really cool. It is visually and technically impressive. The original Stun Runner was rendered in polygons and while the links is capable of 3D rendering, it's also pretty slow, you just have to look at hard driving to know that. So the Lynx port employed some very clever sprite scaling techniques to achieve the same 3D style effects without compromising on speed. And this game is all about speed. You have to be as fast as you can and there's no break unless you hit something and you've got to rely on your reflexes to dodge the obstacles and hit the boost pads to reach your goal in time. Maybe the only thing that lets it down is the sound. I mean it's great to hear the digitised speech in a Lynx game but it's not very clean sounding. 
some of the sound effects during play are, are a bit iffy too, but it definitely doesn't diminish the gameplay. It's fast, it's furious, it's replayable. And it's a faithful port from the arcade to boot. So faithful, in fact, that the digitised speech was lifted wholesale from the coin-op version. Listen carefully and you'll spot it when the game tells you to use the start button for your shockwave, as that was in fact the arcade control scheme and not the same on the links. And so that was my five of the best Atari Lynx games. As I stated earlier, these are purely my personal opinion, and there's every chance you might not agree. If you reckon I made a cruel omission, or you would like to share a favourite of yours, drop me a comment below. As ever, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button and maybe consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Retro Respawn.